Right, okay, welcome to part six of our little shoot 'em uh, game. Uh, in this video, we're going to create a tile map, okay, and a pixel level uh, collision detection system. Um, so at the minute, it's pretty open, you can just shoot each other in the face from the other side of the screen. So we'll make a maze. It's going to be a rubbish maze. What you make of this is how well you draw your maze. Okay, so to start this off, we've got to draw the maze. So we're going to right click on graphics and we're going to say add new item and it'll give it a list of the things that fit for graphics. We want a PNG. We'll give it a name and we'll just call it level one and then click on add. By default, it'll open in the resource editor. We don't want that. So close it. What we want to do is open it with fireworks. So we're going to say open with and it'll give us a list now if fireworks isn't on your list all you need to do is go to add click the little ellipse button you then need to navigate to program files adobe fireworks scroll down for the executable and click on open okay and then just follow the prompts i'm going to click cancel because it's already there so I'm just going to say, set as my default editor. Sometimes it remembers this, sometimes it doesn't. And I'm going to click on OK. And that should load it up into Pyworks. Oh, I clicked on the wrong graphic there. OK, let me just do that again. For some reason, it scroll the window down, that's all. Right, level one, that's it. Created me the graphic. I'm going to say, open with, and then select Pyworks. And there you go, there's my graphic. Now, it guessed at what size we want. We don't want it 800 by 600. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on an area outside of the image, just the gray bit, and we're going to change the canvas size. Now, our screen resolution is 1280 by 720. So that's what size we're going to make this. In a future video, I'll show you how to make a bigger scrolling world. Okay. Right. <clears throat> it started off, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Okay, so that's just control and scroll wheel. It made a white rectangle. I'm just going to delete that. I'm not bothered about that junk. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to draw in black where we want the players to be able to move and bullets to be able to fly. So I'm going to pick a brush, using the brush tool, um, and I'm going to change the brush to hard rounded. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to make the, the path quite big. So I'm going to change the brush size to about 60. And I'm just going to draw a map. So I'm not going to go right to the edge, but I'm going to create a couple of blocks, like courtyardy bits. Um, I'm going to I'm going to create more bits. And I'm going to join them all together because I need to join them all together. Okay, like that can join to that. So you, it doesn't matter what shape you draw, you can draw whatever you want as long as you've got a couple of areas where the player starts that are open to them. Okay, so I'm going to do that. That looks a bit better. I'm going to draw another route there. I'm going to make it a bit fatter. I might have a blob down there. And I might fill that in as well. Okay, so that's that's what my map's going to look like. Um, I'm going to change the canvas colour. Uh, so again, I'm going to click on an area outside. And I'm going to go down here. And I'm just going to pick a naf mm, it's a bit, a bit dark. A green colour. Alright, so that's my map. Those um, blue lines, are, I've got a grid view on. Um, I just tend to work in that. All right, and I'm just going to save that. So I've just closed fireworks. Right, so that creates a graphic, and it's now part of the game. And you see when you move your mouse over it, Visual Studio little gives you a little preview of it. The next thing we need to do is find assets. Now remember, assets is in setup and storage. So if we double click that to load it, in order to work with that graphic, we need to create a texture. 
Okay, so if you scroll down and find TX example. Now, another way of doing this is use the picker up here and look for TX example. It's alphabetical, the picker. And I go to that. So I'm going to create another texture like that. So I'm going to say public static texture 2D. I'm going to prefix it with TX. It makes it easier for you to remember. And I'm going to call this level one map. Okay. Now, just below here, I've got the start preloader method. And this is what loads all the graphics for us at the start. So this line here that I've just highlighted is how we load a graphic. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. And then I'm going to change the texture. So this is where we load the graphic to. So I'm going to change that to tech TX level map or level one map. And then we need to put the name of the graphic. So let's scroll. Now we called the graphic level one dot png so we put here after the graphic slash slash level one you don't put the png bit the extension doesn't matter because we're not actually loading that graphic we're loading something else okay with the same name okay so that's loaded the graphics that's the first bit now we can create um our tile map we need two tile maps we need one to be able to show this graphic um, and another one that we don't show that does all the collision detection for us okay so the first thing we'll create and we're going to do it manually we're going to say project add class now before we do that maybe what we should do is make sure we've got just code activated okay so if we just make sure that that's highlighted first and we could actually right click on that and say add a uh, new item or oh, add class it's down there and that ensures that it just goes at the top level okay case so it doesn't go in a folder or anything if you go wrong it, it you know you can always fix it but let's try and get it right in the first place right we'll call this level map Okay, so it does the standard um, using statement. So let's just go to, to another one that we know has got the ones we want. And we'll just copy them all and put them at the top of level map. Now, this is going to be based off of a tile map object. So we're going to say public class level map and we're going to inherit from tile map. Okay. Then we're going to create the constructor for it. Remember, the constructor is the method that's run when we use the keyword new, when we say new level map. So we can say new level map, and we need to give it a texture to load. So we're going to say texture 2D is the type, and we're just going to call it map image. Okay, so in order for this to work properly, what we need to do is we need to set the tile map up so and what a tile map basically is is a, is a sequence of rectangle images that are drawn to the screen now this is moderately complicated but it's done by the tile map engine okay but what it allows you to do is to scroll the image so it'll repeat blocks as they go off from one side of the screen to another if you did it with a sprite a single image you can't do that so tile maps are useful when you need to scroll graphics okay we're not going to scroll in this case but that's that's what they're useful for right what we need to do is call the base class so we're going to say before the braces we're going to say base and then we're going to pass it the map image and we're going to tell it how big we want each tile to be so we're going to put 40 by 40. so we can say split this image up into 40 by 40 sections okay it's important that those numbers directly go into the dimension so 1280 by 720 are both divisible by 40 right inside the constructor we've only got three uh, two lines to do so we're just going to say gm dot tile map manager and we're going to say add so that tells the time and we're going to say this so this level map that just tells the time map to 
manage the tarmac and show it. Okay. The other thing we need to do is to say, right, okay, take the texture and split it into loads of tiles. So we can ask the tarmac manager to do that as well. So we can say tile to this tarmac starting at position zero. So the top left hand corner of it. And what do we want to tile? Well, the map image. Okay. So that should be enough now to get an image on screen. So if we run our code, and we'll just check that that works. So I'm start the game. Oh, right, no, of course it won't work. So in order to activate this, we're in game container, in the constructor for game container. So that's the, the top. We need to make sure that we actually ask for a new level map. So if we say level map, and we want to know what texture, so we're going to say gm.tx level one map. Okay, so if we run that, that's another good example of just because you created something doesn't mean it's actually going to be active. You've got to call or create an object. There you go. So there's our map. And our two characters are in the right place. If your map's slightly wrong, go back to Fireworks by right clicking on the graphics and say open and edit and then remember to save it but i've luckily i've cleverly done it in a place that's going to work okay now obviously our players don't interact with this yet because we haven't added any code all right but we've got at least a map on screen okay the next job is to create the collision map so this is going to be a moderately complicated process but it um there isn't a lot of code involved, but I'll explain as we go along. So we're going to right click on code again. And we are going to say add class. Okay, and we're going to give it a name again. So this time we'll call it some, uh, uh, what should we call it? Level Collider. Because that's what it's going to be to do with. We want the libraries. So we're just going to copy all those we don't need all the libraries but just for the sake of simplicity for us right again this is going to be a, an inherited tile map so we're going to say tile map but we're going to do something a little bit different this time um, remember i'm showing you technique so what we're going to do is we're going to create a singleton so it makes it easy to access okay so we don't have to use the new keyword to access this and this is exactly how the message bus system is work built so we first off we're going to create a static value of type level collider and we're going to call that instance now this is private so nobody outside this class can see this we're then going to create a public property that's static and a static means you don't need to use the keyword new to access it and this is going to return a type of collider and its name is instance. So properties are like functions with no parameters. And so in some languages, you do them as functions. Okay, so we're going to call it instance and then we're going to put the two sets of braces and then we're going to use the keyword get, which is for returning a value. And then we're going to put two braces. Okay, so we've got this structure so far. Now, what we're going to do <clears throat> is the first time this is used, so when we'll say level collider dot instance, we're going to check to see if we've created a level collider. If we haven't, we're going to create one. All right, so we're going to check for that. We're going to say if instance equals null, i.e. no value has been set. And remember, case sensitivity. So that is not the same as that. So we're referring here to the static level collider, the private one. So if that's true, what we're going to do is we're going to say new level collider. Okay. And then we're going to return the level, the instance that we've just got there. Okay. So we're saying, right, if this hasn't been used before, create it. If it's already in use, use the one you've already got. Okay, now the final piece of this little puzzle to create this singleton is we need to make the constructor private so nobody can use the new keyword. So 
So we just do that. We don't want it to do anything. It's only used by us here. Okay, so that's the end of the singleton code. The only other thing we've got to do is we need to create something that will build the pixel map that we can do the collisions against. So we're going to do that first. So we're going to say public void and we'll call it create pixel collision map and we're going to give it a texture that we're going to use for that so that's a texture 2d um, we'll just call it map okay we've only got two things to do first of all we need to create a map with the right sizes so we're going to say set map and we're going to say one comma one which means one pixel high and wide for each tile because it's a pixel map so it's going to be pixel level collision detection and then we need to create a 2d array that is the right size so the same size as our texture so we're going to say map dot bounds dot height and map dot bounds dot width now i put height and then width because the way that tile maps work is they're row by row so the row comes first okay so don't worry about why that is you don't generally interact with it unless you can do some crazy stuff in that way you just use x and y to refer to places so that creates space for the map and then we're going to get the tile map manager again because it's clever to actually create using the routine fill map from pixel data and we just all we need to do is give it the tile map that we're going to mess with which is this tile map and we need to give it the texture okay so what that those two lines do are create space for the massive collision map which is going to be an array 1280 by 720 in size okay now colors um, are a 32-bit value and they're stored rgb and alpha eight bits for each but tile maps use integers so what this fill map from pixel data routine method does is it turns all those colors into an integer value called a packed value okay now what we need to do is we're going to use that black color um, to represent where we can go a road okay or path i'm going to call it path so we're going to say private int path and we're just going to set this color now i'll type this in first and then explain it so black dot packed value so what we're doing is we're saying get this pack value which is actually when you move your mouse over an unsigned integer so it's a positive integer but we want to convert it into a normal integer a signed integer so that we can store it and use it for comparison okay so we just made a private field a variable that is just for this class to hold that what we're now going to create is a public method that tells us if a particular location has got a path at that location in the tile map so is the pixel a path pixel so this is going to be a boolean function so it's going to return true or false and we'll call it path here and we'll let it accept a vector 2 value so an xy value and we'll call that location now tile map locations are not vector 2 values they are what we call point values which are integer values so we need to first off convert that so we'll call it tile location so we're creating a local variable here called point and then we're going to use the point helper and we're going to say point from vector 2 so this will take a vector 2 value and turn it into an integer x and y value okay so it's going to give it location so that gives us a tile map location now what we're then going to do is we're going to use a function of the tile map called tile item here so we can we can check we can say at the tile location we've got have we got a path and remember this is the path value so is the tile number at that location this path value 
and that will return either true or false okay so that's the end of the path here method okay so we've created our pixel map and our level map now what we haven't done and you must never do this for pixel maps we haven't asked the engine to draw this pixel map because if we did it would have to draw a million tiles on the screen which would absolutely murder it and it couldn't do it okay so that's why we've got a level map to show the graphic of it which is nice and quick and then a pixel map is what we're going to interrogate for collision detection so let's just run that to make sure it still works okay so there's our map what we need to make sure we do though is make sure that this collision map is generated and the best place to do that is inside level map so we're going to go back to level map go to the constructor and on the last line we're going to say level collider dot instance so you've used this methodology with a message system and then we're going to say create pixel collision map oh we need to give it the texture which was map image so the same texture that we're displaying we're using for the pixel map and that's it so that's the level collider is now built so the only thing we've got to do now is make sure bullets stick to the paths so that we've got hidey points and things and make sure the actors stick to the path so let's do the bullets first because that's slightly simpler it's not very complicated at all so we're going to go to bullet and we're going to go to the constructor for bullet remember the constructor is the method with the same name as the class remember you can always use the picker to find any method any field so at the bottom we're going to add this we're going to add an update so we're going to say oops i don't know what to press then we're going to say and on update plus equals and then we're going to generate this uh, a method that is going to do detection with the pixel map so let's just call it check map just for simplicity's sake and we're going to right click on that and get visual studio to generate the method we're going to delete the exception that's generated remember an exception is a software interrupt that's all it is and we're just going to say um wherever the bullet is is it on a path if it's on a path fine if it isn't kill it get rid of the bullet so we're going to say if level collider dot instance dot path here and we're going to give it the location of the bullet which is position 2d so if that's true we're going to kill the bullet but we want the opposite of that so we if they isn't a path there and we can do that in c sharp and a lot of other languages by putting an exclamation mark in front of a boolean value remember this was a boolean this method path here it returned if you move your mouse over it, it'll say bool at the start okay so we're saying not so if there isn't a path there kill the bullet okay let's run that and just see if that works the players will still be able to drive all over the map but hopefully when I shoot a bullet, it stops at the edge of the map. Remember, it's jerking because of Cam Studio. I've got to get a better bit of software than that, but I think I'll have to pay for it. It's free Cam Studio. So you see that the bullets can't penetrate the map. So we just need to do the same for the player. Okay. And we're going to do it in a rough way. We're just going to check the center of the sprite and say the center of the sprite can't go outside the road so we need to when we're going forward and when we're going back do a check okay so let's just add that last bit of code so let's go to actor and go to our control code now all we're going to do is once we've updated the position we've moved forward or we've moved backwards we're going to check to make sure that there's road there if there isn't road there we want to go we want to step back and say oh no undo the update so in order to do that, the first line of our control method, I don't know why mine appeared at the control method, it must have been the last place I edited. Um, but if you can't find the control method, use the picker, okay, and select control. So the first line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a local variable, vector3, and I'm going to just going to current, and I'm going to set that to whatever the player's 
position currently is the actor. Right, and then after my code for forward, after I've updated the position, I'm just going to do a check, which was pretty much identical to what I did with the bullet. So I'm going to say if not level collider dot instance dot path here, and the location one is the location of this actor, the 2D location. Okay, so if we haven't got a path, we so we just moved forward a little bit. If there's no path there, let's go back to the previous position. Oh, I'm going to change the name of that current. I'm going to call it now. Leave it as current. It doesn't matter. Let me just undo that. Right. So I'm just going to say, okay. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We want to roll that back. Make position equal to current. So go back to what we previously had. Okay. And we're going to do exactly the same code. So we're going to copy those two lines, the if and the action to carry out if it's true. And we're going to do it after the down for the back key. Okay, so we're just saying, okay, update the position, check to see if there's a bit of path there. If there isn't, ah, go backwards. So as far as the user concerned, they don't see you going backwards and forwards because we've updated the value before we've even drawn anything. So to the player, it just looks like they're stopped and they can't move forward. That's the theory. Let's try it. Let's see what. I've, see if I've made a mess of something. So I start my game. Try back. Oh look. Woo. And I'm just using the center of the sprite. I could do a radius value to make it, but I mean I'm just trying to keep this simple for now. So I can now navigate around this maze. But I can't shoot any bullets through anything. So I've now made it a little bit more of a challenge, and it. It then comes down to the old adage ooh, nearly got him, of how good do you make your maps? All these multiplayer games where you're like shooting each other, they're only as good as the maps. If the maps are naff, a bit like a race, multiplayer racing games like Mario Kart, if the maps are naff, there's no fun whatsoever. Okay, so that's uh, collision detection at pixel level with a tile map. The easy way as well, because we just drew it and we've made the engine do all the work, effectively. It's very, very cheap as well. Because even though we've got pixel accurate collision detection, we're only looking up in a 2D array to see if there's a number there. So it's super, super cheap. Super, super cheap. And we're only doing it whenever we move forward. So when I'm doing that, I'm not asking anything. Okay. So it's over to you to make your maps. Obviously, I've used black for the areas that we can go on. I can put any other graphic. I could put castles on the, the green stuff if I wanted to. And there's nothing to stop you making a weapon that can go over the green. So it doesn't do collision detection, like a mortar bomb or something. If you wanted to set up some extra keys to do um, different shooting. Um, in a further video, I'm not going to record another one tonight, but in another video, what I'll show you is how to do pickups. And then we can really start having some messing about by changing values. So like speeding players up, slowing players down, um, letting their weapons go different ranges, things like that. So we'll implement pickups. And then a further video, we'll start talking about common enemies. So like AI enemies. Okay. Right, I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, I'll get that saved and uploaded so you can have a mess. Okay, thank you very much.